Does a kangaroo have a mother too? By Eric Carle. Yes, a kangaroo has a mother, just like me and you. Does a lion have a mother too? Yes, a lion has a mother just like me and you. Does a giraffe have a mother too? Yes, a giraffe has a mother just like me and you. Does a penguin have a mother too? Yes, a penguin has a mother just like me and you. Does a swan have a mother too? Yes, a swan has a mother just like me and you. Does a fox have a mother too? Yes, a fox has a mother just like me and you. Does a dolphin have a mother too? Yes. A dolphin has a mother just like me and you. Does a sheep have a mother too? Yes, a sheep has a mother just like me and you. Does a bear have a mother too? Yes, a bear has a mother just like me and you. Does an elephant have a mother too? Yes, an elephant has a mother just like me and you. Does a monkey have a mother too? Yes, a monkey has a mother just like me and you. And do animal mothers love their babies? Yes, yes, of course they do. Animal mothers love their babies just as yours loves you. The end. Friends, if you like this video, please subscribe, like and share for more. Bye. A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean, but he was frightened out in the open sea without his shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me? He thought.
I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hurry Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved running, wiggling and waggling about inside it to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so well, so plain, saw Henry Crab. In March, Henry Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are! said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain. It needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signalled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hard working you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snares. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered the spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like night time, cried the sea urchin.
September, hermit crabs put to their school of lanternfish, darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little, over the years, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon, he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller Hermit Crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know a place for me? I have outgrown my house too answered Hermit Crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here. But you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered. But Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house. A big, empty shell. It looked, well... A little plain, but... Sponges, he thought. Barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The end. Friends, if you like this video, Please subscribe, like and share for some more videos. Bye bye. The Foolish Tortoise by Eric Carl Written by Richard Buckley Tortoise, tired of being slow, impatient to get up and go. Took off his large and heavy shell and left it lying where it fell. Hooray! he cried. Now I've been freed. I'll see the world at double speed.
though faster he was not express and his protection was far less so when he heard a hornet's drone the tortoise crept beneath a stone A hungry bird came swooping past. He looked so fierce and flew so fast. The tortoise hid behind some trees and felt quite weak behind the knees. Along his way our hero went and almost had an accident. A snake with open jaws slid near. The tortoise backed away in fear. A hare, a hound, a horse raced by so rapidly they seem that you fly. The tortoise gapped, sat Google eye. I'll never be that quick, he sighed. He wandered on. The sun rose high. I wish I had more shade, he cried. A sudden thunderstorm swept in and soaked the tortoise to the skin. The wind rose up and soon the breeze was Bending branches in the trees. The tortoise shivered. Now I'm cold. I wish I hadn't been so bold. I think I've lost the urge to roam. I think it's time that I went home. Without my shell, I don't feel right. So when his shell came into sight, he climbed back in and said, Good night. The end. Friends, if you like this video, please share, like, subscribe for some more videos. Bye bye. The Artist Who Painted the Blue Horse by Eric Carle I am an artist and I paint a blue horse and a red crocodile and
a yellow cow and a pink rabbit and a green lion and an orange elephant and a purple fox and a black polar bear and a polka dotted donkey I am a good artist the end friends if you like this video please subscribe like and share for more bye bye You're My Little Baby by Eric Carl. You're my little bear cup, both playful and shy. You're my little baby bird, together we will fly. You're my little lamb, so gentle and sweet. You're my little monkey, whose smiles are such a treat. You're my little hippo, I'll always carry you. You're my little elephant, I love you through and through. You're my little duckling, so soft and so new. You're my little fishy, I'm always there for you. You're my little kitten, I love the way you play. You're my little bunny, forever and a day. You're my little lion cup, you mean the world to me. You're my little baby, and that you always be the end friends if you like this video please share like and subscribe for some more videos bye bye My Very First Book of Animal Homes by Eric Carle
Hello friends! Today we're going to learn about animals and guess which homes they live in. We have dogs, bees, bats, squirrels, mice, fish, bird, penguins, turtle, cow and horse. Let's get started, shall we? First up, we have a dog house. Do you know which animal lives on a dog house? Well done! A dog! A dog lives in a dog house. Let's move on. Now we have a nest. Do you know which animal lives in the nest? Try and guess. Bravo! A bird! A bird lives in the nest. Now we have a hive. Do you know which animals live in a hive? That's right! Well done! Bees! Bees live in a hive. A burrow. Which animal lives in a burrow? You got right. It's a mouse. A mouse lives in a burrow. Now we have a cave. Do you know which animal lives in a cave? Yeah, a bat. A bat lives in a cave. A shell. Which animal lives in a shell? Yeah, you got that right. A turtle. A turtle lives in a shell. An iceberg. Which animal lives in an iceberg? Yeah, that's right. Penguins. Penguins live in an iceberg.
a barn. Which animal lives in a barn? Can you guess? That's right. A cow and a horse live in a barn. Water. Which animal lives in water? Yep, a fish. A fish lives in water. A tree. Which animal lives in a tree? Yeah, a squirrel. A squirrel lives in a tree. The end. Friends, you are smart. Friends, if you like this video, please subscribe, like and share for some more videos. Bye! Walter the Baker by Eric Carle Long ago, in a town encircled by a wall, lived Walter the Baker, his wife Anna, and their son Walter Jr. Walter the baker was known even outside the walls of the town. He was the best baker in the whole duchy. Early every morning, while everybody else was still asleep, Walter began baking his breads, rolls, cookies, tarts and pies. sold as a baked goods in the store. No one could resist the warm, sweet smells drifting from Walter's bakery. People came from near and far. The Duke and Duchess, who ruled over the duchy, loved Walter's sweet rolls. Every morning, Walter Jr. carried a basketful of warm, sweet rolls to the castle where they lived. Mmm, said the Duchess, spreading quince jelly on her roll. Ah, said the Duke putting honey on his. And so each day was the same as the day before until one early morning. When Walter's cat was chasing a mouse and tipped over the can of milk, what will I do? 
cried Walter. I cannot make sweet rolls without fresh milk. In desperation, Walter grabbed a pitcher of water. I hope nobody will notice the difference, he said as he poured the water into the flour to make the dough. Now, you and I may not be able to tell the difference between a roll made with water and one made with milk. But the Duke, and especially the Duchess, could tell the difference. Ugh! cried the Duchess after she took a bite. What is this? roared the Duke. Where is Walter the Baker? Bring him here at once. So Walter was brought before the Duke. What would you call this? roared the Duke. This is not a roll, this is a stone. And with that he threw it at Walter's feet. I used water instead of milk, Walter admitted, hanging his head in shame. Pack your things and leave this town in my duchy forever, shouted the Duke. I never want to see you again. My Duke, pleaded Walter, this is my home. Where will I go? Please give me one more chance, please. I must banish you, said the Duke. But then he remembered Walter's good rules and how much he and the Duchess would miss them. Well, Walter, the Duke started to say. Then he thought and thought some more. You may say if you can invent a roll through which the rising sun can shine three times. And to make it more difficult, he added, it must be made from one piece of dough and most of all, it must taste good. Now go home and bring me such a roll tomorrow morning. Poor Walter, worried and sad, he trucked back to his bakery. Walter worked all day into the night. He made long rolls, short rolls, round rolls, twisted rolls. He made thin rolls and he made fat rolls and he worked some more. Walter beat, pulled, pushed and pounded the dough. But it was all in vain. He could not come up with a roll that would please the Duke. By early morning, Walter had only one long piece of dough left. It's hopeless, he cried. In a sudden fit of anger, he grabbed the last piece of dough and flung it against the ceiling. Stick there, he yelled at the dough, but it didn't. It fell, twisting itself as it dropped down and plopped into a pail of water. Anna and Walter Jr. were awakened by Walter's yell and rushed into the bakery just as Walter was about to dump out the water and the twisted piece of dough. Father, stop! shouted Walter Jr. Look! And Anna quickly popped the dough into the hot oven. She took out the roll and handed it to Walter. It hadn't risen very high, but it had three holes. 
Walter put the roll into a basket and rushed to the castle to deliver his invention to the Duke and Duchess. And they too saw the morning sun shine through it three times. Then the Duke and Duchess each took a small bite. Walter was afraid to look because he had no idea how it would taste. Well done, said the Duke. Perfect, exclaimed the Duchess. Both were glad that Walter would not have to be sent away. And Walter too was happy that he could stay. Now, pray, tell us. Walter, what do you call this? asked the Duke. Uh, yes, pray is tell. What Walter stammered as he tried to come up with a name. What was that? Pre, pre, pretzel? said the Duke. Pretzel it shall be from now on, he declared. It shall be sweet rolls in the morning. And pretzels in the afternoon, said the Duchess. Walter returned to his bakery and spent all day and night making pretzels. The next morning there were baskets of pretzels outside the store for the whole town to taste. And a special basket of pretzels for the Duke and Duchess. And the cheer went up for Walter the pretzel maker. The end. Friends, if you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, and uh, for more. Bye! Happy birthday from the very hungry caterpillar. Today is your day! You are... Standing tall! Climbing high! Shooting for the moon. On this day, you open your presents. Dance with your friends. Enjoy your cake. Today you will feel extra special. But always remember, to me, you're special every day. The end. Friends, if you liked this video, please subscribe share and like for some more videos bye bye happy birthday
Little Cloud by Eric Carle. The clouds drifted slowly across the sky. Little Cloud trailed behind. The clouds pushed upward and away. Little Cloud pushed downward and touched the tops of the houses and trees. The cloud moved out of sight. Little Cloud changed into a giant cloud. Little Cloud changed into a sheep. Sheep and Cloud sometimes look alike. Little Cloud changed into an airplane. Little Cloud often saw airplanes flying through the clouds. Little Cloud changed into a shark. Little Cloud once saw a shark through the waves of the ocean. Little Cloud changed into two trees. Little Cloud liked the way trees never moved and stayed in one place. Little Cloud changed into a rabbit. Little Cloud loved to watch rabbits dash across the meadows. Then Little Cloud changed into a hat because Little Cloud changed into a clown and needed the hat. The other clouds drifted back. They huddled close together. Little Cloud, Little Cloud, they called. Come back! Little Cloud drifted towards the clouds. Then all the clouds changed into one big cloud and rained. Please subscribe, like and share for more videos. Bye!
My very first book of numbers by Eric Carle. One, one pineapple. Two bananas. Three. Three apples. Four pears. Five. Five oranges. Six. Six lemons. Seven, seven strawberries. Eight, eight plums. Nine. Nine cherries. And ten. Ten grapes. The end. Friends, if you like this video, please subscribe, like and share for some more videos. Bye bye!